cordial welcome. Welcome to Tiny Mansion's uh, Zoom event. And we're very excited to be able to be sharing with you uh, some really great information regarding the industry of factory built housing, the differences between manufactured homes and factory built assets, some of the laws uh, written in the state of California's Housing and Community Development Department's factory built housing. Uh, we'll be uh, talking about some of those laws as well. Uh, we'll be talking about the uh, Im importance between or difference between ADUs and movable tiny houses. Uh, for those in the San Diego area and Los Angeles area, uh, there are some great laws that are allowing conversions from movable tiny houses to become, which are personal property, to become accessory dwelling units. So we'll be touching on some of those laws as well. Um, finally, of course, uh, we'll be sharing some of our tiny mansions and uh, how that how this came to being. So uh, the basis of our presentation today will be about 15 to 20 minutes that I'll be speaking one directionally. Then we'll open it up, open it up for another 15, 10 or 15 minutes for questions. Um, I already know we have here with us uh, people that are in the real estate industry, brokers, people that are investors, people that have already purchased accessory dwelling units and or have um, rental property that they may want to place one on, people that have also purchased movable tiny houses. So I'm really excited that you are excited. And without any further ado, let me share my screen and get the ball rolling here. Okay, very well. My name is Harold Zapata. I am uh, president of Tiny Mansions. And we have some more people coming in. Let me admit them. Very good. I am the president of Tiny Mansions. Uh, Tiny Mansions uh, is being brought to you by uh, a 39-year-old factory in Hermosillo, Sonora, Mexico. Uh, this factory has been approved by the state of California's Housing and Community Development Department. And under that, there is something called Factory Built Housing Department. Uh, the state of California, and we're very, very humbled. In fact, I'll just say this off the top here, with the over a million square feet under roof, uh, we are uh, the only Latin American um, company approved by the state of California to build single family residences, accessory dwelling units here to the Southern California, all of California, for that matter, housing market, as well as movable tiny homes. We'll be talking about all of those today. Um, our CEO is my friend, Luis Ortega. His family owns the uh, largest steel manufacturing plant in Mexico. And from uh, having been awarded big contracts for stadiums, hospitals, educational universities, um, of course, housing as well out there, we are moving uh, into the U.S. housing market with a very strong presence. And we call ourselves Tiny Mansions. Tiny Mansions is an, a U.S. LLC. And yours truly is in charge of bringing uh, these assets into the California market. Um, let me share with you how these assets come to being, how they exist. Um, in order for an entity to be approved by the state of California, uh, they must be vetted uh, by a specific agency. Let me go straight to the hed.ca.gov website. You'll see here that California has a department called Housing and Community Development. They have a sub uh, department called Factory Built Housing. And this is the very great place to get started. You have heard terms before such as prefab, manufactured homes, and pre-1976 mobile homes. All these are terminologies for personal property that comes in through a uh, the guidelines of HUD, Housing Urban Development, and also through the use of your local DMV, Department Motor Vehicles. These are assigned a VIN number. They come to you on wheels, um, and they are, for all intents and purposes, not real estate. They are personal properties, and they can become real estate through the use of a form called 433A. And once a structural um, engineer allows this asset to be placed on permanent foundation and registers it as such with the county, um, then that is now considered a single family residence. This type of beast is not what we do. 
Tiny Mansions falls under the purview of the factory built housing departments under the housing and community development under the state of California. As such, factory built housing programs make sure that the houses that we build are built under the same California residential building code that a regular stick built, site built house is built. Title 25, Title 24. In order for us to prove that, we need to go through a California approved architectural firm, California approved structural engineering firm with stamped plans, mechanical, electrical, and plumbing uh, firm with stamped plans, and fire suppression firm with stamped plans. Those four plans together are given to the local general contractor. He or she will go to the city and will do the same permitting process as a regular site-built structure. The only difference is that once we're given the permits, once the grading takes place, the moment that the foundation is cured after about 35 days, when a site-built entity starts framing, we've already delivered, fully finished, the full house. Because while this is taking place, uh, we have uh, we have successfully, I mean, put some more people in here. Very good. While this is taking place, we have already successfully been able to finish the complete structure. So how these structures look like, let me go here to our website, tinymansions.homes. In tiny mansions that homes, here we have, for example, in our landing site, we have our three bedroom, three lock off, two bed, 1111 square foot asset. And uh, I'll get to them right now. As you'll see here in our hamburger, we have single family residences. Let me take a look at those here first and foremost. So once the foundation is cured, tiny mansions brings these uh, beautiful assets onto the site. So this is our 1,100, 11 square foot, three bedroom, two bath. And you'll notice, interesting, each bedroom has its own door as well. We have a regular entrance. All of our doors are uh, wrought iron, half ton. All of our assets are all 10 foot by six foot marble slab floors, quartz counters, and quartz backsplash. We're able to offer a superior quality luxury quality. That's what we're, called, what we're called tiny mansions. We're able to offer that at the same price or even below the price that you would buying a 1990 house and flipping it and earning some ROI from it. This is a brand new asset 2024. This is by all terms and conditions, a single family residence. Uh, and uh, this is a uh, you can get a VA loan, you can get a USDA loan, FHA loan, a regular conventional loan. This is our three bedroom, two bath, one story. Here we have a three bedroom, two bath, two story. And again, all of these come by modules. So we'll take a look at, for example, one of the floor plans here. Um, give it a second here. So as you'll see here, this is a three module. So this would be one module, which is 40 foot 44 foot long by 8.6. 8.6 is the same width that would be coming on a semi, for example. That's exactly the width, 8.6 feet. It's joined here by a mate line, if you can see here. And these mate lines are bolted on site. Here would be the second module. This would be, of course, the third module. These are lock-offs, meaning that each room has its own entrance. Besides having the main entrance, this third room has its own entrance. Room two has its own entrance. Room one has its own entrance. We're doing this obviously to maximize interest for Airbnb um, um, assets that people may be interested in. These are our single family residences. This is an example of our 11, 11 square foot asset. Here we have the two story, 1500 square foot, three bedroom, two bath. And again, they come in by modules. As we take a look at these modules as well, as well, you can imagine, module number uh, one and two are right here. As you can tell, this is uh, 36 feet here and 8.6 8 and 8.6 8 and 8.6 here can have about 16 
0.10 in width here, as well as here. These are two different modules and we place one on top of the other. So when we're talking about speed, when we're talking about quality, what you're wanting to know is that once the foundation cures and we're able to bring the assets there, we would have eaten up between six to nine months of construction time. That's the first point. Quality, steel framed, all of our assets are steel framed assets. None of this, we don't use a lot of wood. We also have a beautiful 4,050 square foot asset. And uh, this of course also comes with the marble flooring and you can look at all these um, uh, floor plans and so forth on the website. For those people that like apartments, we also build apartments. These are our one bedroom, one bath ADU, one on top of the other, giving us in this case here an eight apartment complex. So we can do multifamily. We can do singular uh, single family residences. And so what I want to share with you now is uh, how this came to be. Uh, when we started with this concept a couple of years ago, it took us about two years to get qualified by the state. The state of California is going to say, you need a design approval agency. Uh, this uh, design approval agency has been vetted by the state of California's HCD, Factory Built Housing Department, and we give them the architectural stamped, structural engineer stamped, MEP stamped, fire suppression stamped plans. We have to produce a materials list that lists every single nut and bolt, the quality of every type of iron. Uh, steel, uh, every single uh, every single element that goes in there has to be uh, up to code for California. Every single part has to be shown how it is approved by certain government codes like ASTM and UL and others. And we have to source it where it comes from, its manufacturer, how it's built, every single nail, nut and bolt of everything. We also have to get the testing done on the on the uh, iron, uh, the steel, uh, hot rolled, uh, cold formed. Everything is um, listed in a very clear materials list and approved by the state of California. Then we have to have a very clear quality assurance manual that uh, delineates all of our best practices all the way down to the name and license number of our welders because our assets are all steel framed. Uh, a lot of supervision is given to the on-site assembly manual. So there are three different manuals that we need to approve by the design agency, approval agency. And then on top of that, there's a quality assurance agency. And this gentleman, we have to fly every week from California to our factory in Hermosillo, Sonora, Mexico. And every module that comes, that comes out of our factory is inspected by him and our team. And uh, he, is, he gives us a California approved insignia. This insignia of approval issuance is uh, kept in records by the Quality Assurance Agency. And we transport each module to its final job site, uh, work site location here in Southern California. Now, in order for this to be regulated, Again, I would like to just for your attention, bring to the following information. Factory built housing, as it states right here, is not, and I repeat, is not manufactured homes, is not prefab, and it's not mobile homes. Factory built housing is a residential building. It's built up by the same code that every site built building is built. I re uh, recall again, California Residential Code, Title 25 and Title 24. It's a dwelling unit. It's an individual dwelling room, combination of rooms, building components, assemblies. And so this is very important that, that we understand this. Now, if you're here in the hcd.ca.gov um, website, you can also click here to download the actual book. There is a book or booklet uh, written by Mr. John Westfall, who represents factory built housing. And... For any of our investors who are here present, he will also uh, assist you 
if there are any issues with the local city ordinances, specifically the city inspector, this is coming from the state. And the state will assist you if there are issues. Of course, we will be there with you as well. But it's important for you to know that Big Brother, California um, uh, state, uh, will be here with us. And uh, we have been approved. We're the only Latin American approved uh, company that is bringing these assets from Latin America into the U.S. High quality. We pay very good salaries to our workers, but we don't pay them in dollars. We pay them in pesos. We don't pay high workers' compensation insurance premiums like here in the States or uh, highly skilled unionized labor. Um, all these drive the prices up. We bring a high quality California approved asset uh, with great workers, great craftsmanship, only luxury products. And we call ourselves tiny mansions. And we, this is our Bible. Uh, factory built housing handbook and uh, you can download this here from the hcd.ca.gov website that you see right here so uh, coming back to where we're at we want you to explore the future with us um, what does this look like more and more the future is looking like people need quick housing solutions that don't need six to nine months to be built and or heavy permitting processes that have a lot of red tape around it. When our architects send your general contractor our plans, the very first page on the plans are very clear with wording from the state of California saying that these plans have already been inspected and approved by the state of California's Housing and Community Development Department, Factory Built Housing. The city inspector cannot ask for any of our uh, walls to be open to inspect any joists or the electrical panels to be opened or plumbing. It's already been inspected. All they can do is be there when the foundation is being poured. And then all they can do is be there when the, when the asset arrives on the job site and it's assembled. It takes a two-man crew about three to, three to four days to assemble it. As you'll see with these uh, pictures here, we, we uh, do have some soffits that there will be some assembly required on site. And we do have, of course, uh, all the bolting that needs to be taking place on the mate lines. I want to repeat again, these are not mobile homes. These are not manufactured homes. These are not prefab homes. Those are all personal property. Uh, Mr. John Westfall very clearly has stated, the moment that our boys are welding the asset in Mexico, while they're welding it, California already considers it single family residence. Why? Because it's built up to code. So a factory built house is the exact same as a site built house only done in a factory. Of course, that gives a lot of reasons why to do that. We want to mainly emphasize also not only a lower carbon footprint, uh, less waste. Factory built means factory precision. Uh, it's not exposed to the elements um, and also the time that it takes for us to build it. Since we have an assembly line, we are able to uh, really uh, speed up the process so that while the foundation is being cured, we're building it. Once it's cured, it takes about three days to bring it in and about three or four days for it to be completely assembled. We bring it up to the job site. By law, of this booklet that we, you saw here, this booklet does say that we need to bring it to the hands of a um, licensed general contractor for the state of California. So coming back here to a little bit more about Tiny Mansions. Tiny Mansions presents three different products or product lines. Again, we've already talked about our single family residences. Usually these are three bedrooms, uh, whether it be one story, two story, and we also have a 4,000 square foot, three bedroom, three bath mansion. Now we also uh, build what we call accessory dwelling units. An accessory dwelling unit is an asset that is built behind or in the backyard of an existing single family residence, usually zoned R1. And it's called an accessory because that's exactly what it is. It's an accessory to the existing structure. If there were no structure, 
it would just be called a small house. So let's talk about accessory dwelling units. They are basically classified in two, junior accessory dwelling units, which are under 500 square feet. We have one of those to show you. And accessory dwelling units that are above 500 square feet. Currently, the law states it can't be any bigger than 800 square feet on the base, and you can build an additional 400 square feet on top. The law also states, so that it's a maximum of about 1,200 square feet on a two-story ADU. Uh, can't be more than 16 feet high. Uh, accessory dwelling units need to have setbacks. Currently, the law states it has to be four feet from uh, the sides and the, and the back of the existing um, uh, um, perimeter, perimeter of uh, the, of the uh, lot. And uh, no less than 10 feet removed if it's a detached ADU from the existing single family structure. ADUs do come in different shapes and sizes, of course. Some can become garage conversions. Others could be uh, attached to the property, but most are fully detached. Uh, they can be joined to the existing um, water and electrical lines, or they can also have their own meters. Uh, accessory dwelling units that are less than 750 square feet save about $35,000 in impact fees. Anything 750 square feet and more, there'll be a $35,000 impact fee um, assessed to that. Um, accessory dwelling units um, are, hold on, got some more people coming in. Accessory dwelling units um, are a great way, uh, especially after we've learned the time in, in the pandemic, to be able to um, diversify with what you're doing with, um, it could be a millennial kid, an elderly uh, person in your family, like a father or mother, uh, for them to maybe quarantine uh, there if that would be needed, and or it's a great way also to supplement your income, to be able to produce from your backyard uh, an actual, um, an actual income-producing backyard. So we want to definitely make sure that uh, we are aware that accessory dwelling units after the year uh, 19, uh, 2019, September 2019, Governor Newsom enacted several laws that became into effect January of 2020. Other new laws have come into the effect as well, so that today the red tape surrounding accessory dwelling units has been lifted up a lot, specifically dealing with the number of parking spaces and proximity to, um, to um, mass transit. Some laws that were kind of hard, limited, which places could have an accessory dwelling unit. Now, pretty much any home uh, that has an adequate lot on the back, again, four foot setbacks, and about 10 feet away from the main structure, is able to have an accessory dwelling unit. Uh, let me share with you some of, uh, again, this is from our factory. You can see this is one of our um, one of our homes that we did. I brought this here as a, as a picture. This is a steel framed, eight and a half or 8.6, 8.6, 8 8.6 by 53. This would actually be an 11 feet tall. So this would be actually almost the size as you can actually imagine one of the semis there on the road. We join these together in the mate lines. Of course, they come fully finished. This is just the uh, bones, so you can see them. And they end up looking like one of these here. This is our one bedroom, one bath, two module, as you can see here, accessory dwelling unit. Uh, you have your nice entrance here. You have a queen size bed, walk-in closet. You have the living area, dining area, uh, the bathroom area, uh, everything that you need here, washer and dryer, and then outside, of course, what's needed for the for the water here. Everything here is this one bedroom, one bath. This would be a two module. This would be split down the middle. Two modules brought in here 26 feet by 16.4. I'm sorry, 16.8. This would be our one bedroom, one bath. Again, steel framed. Our two bedroom, two bath. Uh, we kind of like this because each one has that kind of their own bathroom. Uh, you come in here and you have your, your the living room area, you have the washer, you have the primary bedroom, the walk-in closet with its own bathroom. You got a kitchen living room area here. The second bedroom, of course, has also its own uh, bathroom as well with its own walk-in closet. And uh, again, these are uh, brought, in, brought to you by two modules, as you can see here, eight and a half, eight and a half, smack down the middle, 17 feet 
wide by 40 foot foot long. Here we have also a 986 ADU. This is also an accessory dwelling unit. And here we have it so that uh, this would be a, now a four module, two on the bottom, two on the top. And uh, they're very pretty. And of course, the question a lot of people have is, um, what are the prices? So we have here the pricing on our website. And uh, this is what another thing that really sets us apart from pretty much anybody else. Uh, for, and we'll talk about MTHs here in a moment. Let me just uh, not talk about the mobile tiny homes yet. Uh, we're going to leave those up here. We'll start with accessory dwelling units. Our 420 junior accessory dwelling unit that has two modules. It's 420 square feet. Uh, retail 140. Investor, if they're ordering minimum seven, it's 110. Uh, for And again, we're looking for investors, obviously. We're more interested in working with an investor and then they'll be able to do a resell. We're looking for exclusive distributors in the LA area. Let's talk. We want to definitely work with you. Uh, our two bedroom, two bath, 748. Again, we have it under 750 so that, there, that there's no 30,000 plus impact fee there. We kept that under two, be two bedrooms, two baths. Uh, why did we do two bedrooms and two baths? Because people put that in their, back in their backyard and they can now uh, rent it to two different couples. And so that's pretty cool. 180 uh, manufacturers suggest a retail price, 140 uh, for our investor friends. The uh, two-story, four-module, three-bedroom, two-bath, 986 ADU, 250 here. Manufacturer says the retail price, uh, 200 for our investors purchasing seven or more of them to resell. Uh, now, let's talk about our single-family residences. Uh, we do have the three-bedroom, three-lock-off, uh, two-bed uh, two with three modules. It's between 150 to 180 a square foot. Of course, if we're putting out this out here in Newport Beach, it's going to be closer to the 180. If we're out in San Bernardino, uh, Joshua Tree, Yucca Valley, it'll be closer to 150. The same thing would apply for our two bed, uh, our two story, three bedroom, two bath, 1500 square foot asset between $140 again in Joshua Tree, San Bernardino area, Yucaipa, or 170 out there in Orange County. Uh, and of course, now we're looking at our mansion style. 4,050 square foot asset. And uh, we can put these down out there in Newport Beach, over $220 a square foot. And this is great because the stuff is going out there at 1,200 a square feet, so, square foot. So let's talk. Let's all make some money on this. Uh, there is, uh, people say, well, what, what um, how is this delivered? Uh, there is a $6,000 per module uh, fee for us to be able to bring this over. All of our assets, attention investors, they arrive uh, fully. 100% turnkey. So we give the plans to the general contractor. Uh, they'll do everything that has to do with the uh, getting the prep on the work site done. Um, we do not bring the garages. So garages need to be built on site. That's the only thing that needs to be built. We'll give the GC the permit ready plans, all with California stamped architectural MEP, structural fire suppression approved by the state of California by residential code, Title 25 and Title 24. Uh, questions to this effect, we got Big Brother, California, our friend, Mr. John Westfall, who wrote the book, and uh, he will be able to assist me and your general contractor should city have any issues. Again, the permitting process goes actually rather quickly. And if you do have a chance, I'll encourage you, when you have a chance, click on the process, uh, and that'll it'll take you through the whole process. I'm not going to talk about that this evening. Um, this is right now what I have to say about single family residences and accessory dwelling units. Just again, a quick reminder, all of our assets are single family residences. None of these are mobile homes or movable tiny houses or um, manufactured homes or prefab. These are called factory built homes, which are the same as a single family residence. Okay, having stated that, I do want to now get, get to the other part of what we bring as, a, um, as an entity into the California housing market. And we call these, or the industry calls, in, calls them MTHs, uh, movable tiny houses, movable tiny homes. A movable tiny home is a factory built transportable accessory structure that is personal property. 
uh, no smaller than 150 square feet, no bigger than 400 square feet. And uh, it could be placed on the backyard of a residential lot if the city allows it. So this is very important. Please pay close attention. Um, movable tiny houses um, are not built per California Residential Building Code. They're built by the federal um, national, uh, I'm sorry, the federal um, American National Standards Institute, ANSI, A119.5 Park Model Recreational Vehicle Standards. This is the booklet by which it is built. And so this booklet talks about all the um, uh, rules, regulations, the guidelines by which all these, these structures need to be built. The same DAA, Design Agency Approval, that approves us for the single family residences and accessory dwelling units also approves us for the uh, movable tiny houses. These movable tiny houses can become, which are personal property, they come in through the DMV with a, a VIN number given to them on wheels, movable tiny houses, houses on wheels, other types of terminology for it. They need to be um, California stamped architectural, called California stamped mechanical engineering plumbing, and California uh, fire suppression stamped. Again, these, these all are approved to be uh, sold not only in California, but through all the 50 states. And these are uh, beautiful assets. Uh, we call them, of course, tiny mansions. But I want you to read this here with me. Extra, extra, read all about it. Let's go to Los Angeles, since we have many friends in the Los Angeles area, and download what the municipal codes for Los Angeles say about movable tiny houses becoming accessory dwelling units. Guidelines for use and permitting of the accessory dwelling unit movable tiny house. So this ordinance in the city of Los Angeles, municipal code, is basically stating that a movable tiny house is defined as an enclosed space intended for separate independent living quarters of one family and meets the following requirements. It has to come in through the DMV has to meet ANSI, ANSI 119.5 requirements. It has to have a design agency approval approving it, just like we have it. Cannot move under by its own power. It can't be any larger than what the highway laws allow for it to be transported in. No smaller than 150, no larger than 430 square feet. And is basically saying the following, that Movable tiny houses are permitted through a ministerial process in all zones, which allow for any type of residential use. And where there is a proposed or existing already unit on the lot, like a house, to the additional restrictions of these limits. Movable tiny houses, except for those provisions that apply solely to buildings and structures, are not considered structures per se per the zone code or building code. They're not real property but they can become real property and they will be allowed to be placed in the back of a house as if it were a, an accessory dwelling unit if it meets these zoning requirements, which we've already talked on a lot of these, the same setbacks as an ADU, four feet from the sideline lots, and at the end of the day is built according to the ANSI A119.5. What does this mean for you? It means that you can have a personal property, personal asset with a DMV VIN number hoisted over the house. You don't need a permanent foundation. All you need is just a slab and then connect it to the existing house. All these are spelled out step by step here in this six page document. And so I encourage you, read up on it. The permitting is very, very simple. Only two permits are needed. Um, it's not a big deal. If you are in San Diego, the city proper, if you are in Los Angeles, the city proper, and these other cities as well, San Luis Obispo, Fresno, Santa Clara, or San Jose. And in Santa Clara, it's the whole county of Santa Clara. You're able to place 
this movable tiny house in the backyard and it will be considered an accessory dwelling unit. I don't know of any other place. I don't know of any other place where you can convert what? an exist an existing uh, personal property for it to become a real property just by the stroke of a municipal code. So if you're in Los Angeles, San Diego, San Luis Obispo, Fresno, California, San Jose, let's talk because uh, we can put uh, a lot of these out there. And of course, all Santa Clara County, this is uh, kind of what we're doing right now. So let me uh, do a little summary and then I'll open it up for everyone. Tiny Mansions is California's leader for accessory dwelling units, movable tiny homes. Oh, I didn't show you our movable tiny homes. <laughs> um, our movable tiny houses, um, these are sleek, they're sexy, they're beautiful. Um, let me show some of them here for you. We have uh, these beautiful parks that we can do. This is an actual development we're doing in Mexico. If you love Tulum, Mexico, you'll love uh, this beautiful, what we're doing here. One, uh, these are three story. Uh, we can you know, do these also here in the States, but this is what we're doing in Mexico right now. Three story uh, with a sun deck up in the top. Very, very beautiful, sexy. And uh, these are uh, very beautiful, um, movable, tiny houses, 8.6 feet wide and 36 feet long for the one bedroom, one bath and 42 feet long for the two bedroom, a one bath. Again, it's all self-contained. It comes on wheels. Uh, the wheels, of course, by law have to be covered so you won't see them. Uh, but uh, it is all, by all intents and purposes, a great asset. People ask, well, what is the price on these? You can always go and uh, visit us here on our pricing tab. And you'll see here our 36 footer, one bedroom, one bath. And by the way, these we can accept. You can do a HELOC, you can cash, refi. Uh, these are also financing for RV financing companies that can finance these. And these are going for MSRP, $125,950 on the one bedroom, um, one bath. Uh, investors that order 10 at a time will get it for $90,000. And then, of course, $135,950 MSRP for the two bedroom, one bath, 360 square foot model. And investors that buy 10 or more of these at 99950 Again, these are MSRPs. You'll be able to sell these for a lot more in Los Angeles than you would in San Bernardino. Uh, but uh, this is um, kind of where we're at. So now let me do the summary. Uh, the industry is fast exploding. Right now in front of you, you have a willing, ready, and able, the only Latin American California-approved manufacturer of single-family residences, accessory dwelling units that are all up to California Residential Building Code, Title 24 and Title 25. And also we can bring these beautiful movable tiny houses in all 50 states. We're ready and, and ready. Uh, we just got approved a few months ago. And that's why we're having, this is our first meeting. This is my first presentation. Uh, I hope I did a, an, an okay job to answer a lot of your questions at this moment. Um, Please feel free to unmute yourself. If you have any questions, I'd like to uh, leave the last uh, 15 minutes or so before we're done to answer any questions that uh, we'll be able to. Again, my name is Harold Zapata, the president of Tiny Mansions, and uh, we're looking forward to working with you. Uh, where is the company? Great question from Ivy. The company, the uh, good question. The company, the US company, our headquarters is in Litchfield Park, Arizona. I am in Southern California in the Riverside area. Our factory, however, which is what is approved by the state of California, is our factory. And our factory is located in Hermosillo, Sonora, Mexico, in Mexico. California approved. That is one question. Feel free to put it in the chat box and or uh, unmute yourself and uh, we can try to answer any of your questions. Hopefully I did a very good job. So there are no questions, but I don't think so. Uh, by all means, if you have any questions, um, we'd love to be able to entertain uh, the answers here. And I'm well-versed with all these. 
Could I see the real house which you build? Absolutely. So let's say that you are an investor and you'd like to see, we have a couple of these already on our 40 acre factory. We have a million square feet under roof and we have a couple of these to show you at our factory. The answer is yes. Do we have any investors with any investing questions? Um, again, these are, I, I do hear somebody's unmuting. Araceli, is that you who, who unmuted? Yes. Hi, okay, Harold, Araceli, how, how can I help you? Hi, a great presentation, by the way. Um, thank you for all the, thank you for all the information and what an exciting um, uh, product that you're bringing to the market, into the real estate market. It's amazing. So I, I did see that you have um, also a, the, eight, the eight apartment complex, or I don't know how to describe it. Yes. Um, so I, I just, I can go on to the website and figure out pricing. So as far as finding um, a, a lot um, for zoning here, do you recommend that the uh, land needs already water and power? Is that what you're recommending? Okay, let's talk about this. Uh we will, okay, so our job is to present the asset to the general contractor on the day it has to be there. Now, the general contractor will have worked with us, with the plans that we give them. And if it's needed for there to be a well or some sort of septic, it doesn't necessarily have to have city connections, city sewer. It can, it can, it can have a well, it can have... Um, septic if it does not have connections on the on the right there on the road so for us it does not matter what matters is is that the, it's clear on the plans and that it has been approved uh, and permitted by the local city so we will deliver it anywhere but my recommendation um you want to make sure that um if you're searching for lots more than it having access to water right there because you can have a well or to uh, sewer because you can't have septic is to make sure that the zoning for such an asset is right for example if it's going to be multifamily, um then you may want to make sure that is zoned for that if you want uh the the mobile park luxury park models then make sure that it's zoned uh the m uh mh the mobile the mobile housing zoning uh, if it's just a regular lot, infill lot, more than likely it's going to be probably an R1. And um, in that case, of course, if you would ask me as an investor, I would go to the cities that have infill lots that the builder did not finish building there. You already have city water and sewer right there. You probably have going to have more comps in the area as well than some rural. And that's where I would start popping these like popcorn. Absolutely. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I did see here uh, with a couple of questions coming in. First and foremost, can we build townhomes in Upland, California? Yes. So these apartment complexes that you saw uh, are, are one bedroom, one bath, one on top of the other. Could we put the two bedroom, oh, I'm sorry, the two story, three bedroom, two bath, so they share a common, common wall? Absolutely. Uh, it's just a what it will be like on the on-site assembly process. Uh, and that will not be an issue. We can do that. And I see Ivy that you have a land in Upland that you can build up words of 55 townhomes. Um, and uh, I'd love to be able to uh, be able to source that for you. The answer is yes. We could also build them in a town home, tan townhouse setting. Al is asking the question, what's the protocol to get to work with your company to sell these homes to our prospective clients? I'm, I'm a very easy guy. Um, I'm in Southern California. I'm all about Starbucks, coffee, face-to-face. -face, um, and it's very simple. If I was in your shoes, I'd like to uh, know that I have my investor with deep pockets. I'd like to do my due diligence, perhaps go and tour the factory first. That's what I would do. Come back, uh, maybe with your own little phone video or whatever, some pictures, talk to your investor and say, go, let's do it. Uh, find the land, tell us who your general contractor is that you'd like for us to work with. We all get a game plan together and we pull the trigger. That's what I would recommend. Um, and um, yeah, that's kind of that simple. That's what I would do. 
Um, Wendy is asking the question, what would the contractor fees be? And the, okay, so <laughs> again, that's where you got to talk to your contractor. Again, it depends on the lot, depends on the asset. Uh, for example, there will be some lots, say anything above 8,000, 9,000 square feet that you would want to put maybe our one, our three bedroom, one story, uh, two bath asset in the front, and then a small one bedroom, one bath ADU in the back. Now you have two foundations. You'll do the same grading. So it's going to be the same cost for the grading. Uh, the connections, you may have double connections if you want to have two separate meters. So depending on the situation, the GC is going to cost, you know, charge you more or less. Of course, the pouring of the foundation, in this case, it would be two foundations. So what the GC costs will look like, uh, that will be something that we would encourage you to have your own general contractor and we will work with him or her. Absolutely. And those costs, uh, nothing will be uh, a surprise for you. We will have a very clear plan, financial plan from beginning to end. On our end, we have it down to the T. We'll talk to that general contractor and we'll have a complete proposal for you before we pull the trigger. Um, very important. Thanks. Uh, Ivy, could you help deal with Upland City get permit? Yes. So who helps you get the permits? Your general contractor and us. We will give it the plans to him or her. We will go to the city together. And uh, if we need the assistance of the California State uh, Director for Factory Built Housing, Mr. John Westfall, he has promised to be there on the phone with us as well. And he's done it already a couple of times. How much per square foot? Uh, again, uh, you can look at the prices. We have the prices already. Uh, Ivy, if you go to pricing, the prices are already there. For three and four bedrooms, uh, the prices would be already there, uh, depending where it's going to be placed at. I'm late to a meeting. Okay. Yes, you'll get the recording. Everyone who's here um, that registered will be getting the recording. Very good. Any last questions? We want to honor our time and finish before eight o'clock. So uh, my name is Harold Zapata. Uh, why don't you propose to the city of Los Angeles to create houses for the homeless? We, Wendy, we're working on that. <laughs> We're, we're working on that. It's not as easy as it seems, but yes, um, it would be an honor. When you see the prices that the, the LA is paying for nightly hotel rooms, for our VAs, for the homeless, and or uh, there, there have been some initiatives for these smaller tiny houses in the hundreds of thousands per each one, it would make a lot of sense to be using us here. Uh, but yes, uh, this is... Um, this is where you want to be. Where is your office address? I can send that to you here at the end of our meeting. Yes. So uh, the answer is yes. Our, so what has been approved, I want to make this clear, is our factory. That's what's important is the factory. And the factory is in Sonora, Mexico. And yes, if you're planning on going there, I can meet you there, introduce you to the team. We have 43 employees there, humble people, hardworking. And yes, Al, it's an honor Look forward to working with you. It's an honor to present this Zoom meeting. We'll be doing these every Tuesday between now and the uh, middle of June. So um, if there are no other questions, I want to thank you all for your time. Uh, my name is Harold Zapata. My cell phone number and my email is on the website, tinymansions.homes. Let's talk. I like to also put it here. Also, have you seen the cute cabins at El Capitan Campground above Santa Barbara? It's a glamping campground. I have not, Wendy. I'd love to be able to see them because we have some awesome uh, luxury uh, park models as well that we're able to uh, uh, help them as they're growing their, their cabins as well. It's about making money, guys. At the end of the day, it's about converting personal, profit, uh, personal property into real property uh, by the use of local municipal codes and or by having really great, um, a, a real great a real estate business plan to buy lots and build on them uh, 2023 assets and to be able to command a good ROI, whether you're renting them or selling them. Yes, that would be great, Wendy. If they're like, Teresa, un placer, bendiciones. También hablamos español. Si necesitan ayuda, estamos aquí para ayudar. God bless you guys. And then I will send this recording off to everyone.
and we look forward to seeing you. Man, once you you may want to bring some of our some of your investors next Tuesday night as we'll rehash this again. Thank you again for your time. All the best. Yeah.